is Heaven Smile on Me by Mela. Mela wrote, um, sang, and produced that song and the video that you just watched. And today he's our guest in the studio. I really like how honest and vulnerable that song is. Thank you so much for joining us, Mela. Thank you for inviting me. That is a very honest and vulnerable song. And I'm happy that, you know, we're having that conversation. Seeing as we started the show talking about internet fraud. Yeah. And I played a video of that, the show is saying, how do they expect the young boys to survive? How do they expect young boys, poor people to feed themselves? But in the first line of the song, you said, as you know, if it's if... I've got to survive, man. I've got to survive, you know. So tell us, did you write that song from a place of personal experience? Yes, because um, after school, I had to um, work for a while. And then, so I left work and then I wanted to pursue my dreams, but it wasn't easy. And then, I gas work, I love it thief, man. So there were other options, options of internet fraud, options of the practical stealing, you know. Well, I just wanted to follow my passion and so that's like a product of my passion. Did you ever at any point get tempted or approached, you know, or seduced to be a part of internet fraud? Of course. Oh, really? Yeah, I know a lot of people that uh, are into internet fraud. I, 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 one time I was rolling with some of them, you know, because we were in the hood. We, we we have to be, make friends with people, basically. So I was tempted. I was almost going to go into that, but somehow, somehow. So what stopped you? So basically, upbringing. Um, my parents um, are pastors, so they're ministers. My dad, late now, but he was a minister, my mom. So that don't bring shame to the family kind of um, lesson that you get from home, so basically. And um, secondly, for me, I, I felt like I, I, I'm more. I, I had more to give than to just make money off someone that um, had saved up money for his or her life savings. I felt like I could give more. I felt like I could be more influential with the gift that I was given. So if I nurture it well and, um, and spread the gospel of my gift, I'll, I'll probably make as much money as I want to live a comfortable life. And what happens if, God forbid, you never make as much money as you want to live a comfortable life? <sighs> it's okay. It's, 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 it's a decision that I had to make when I had to resign from my job. So I resigned from a job that was paying well. And uh, so having to resign, I thought, uh, thought about the negatives that could happen if I, I never blew. And you decided to take that risk. So at the time you wanted to resign, you know, what were your biggest fears and which of them have come to pass? Fear of the unknown, fear of not matching up to my colleagues, my friends. So I was this bright kid in school. I was like, so I was the kind of kid that every lecture I wanted to do a masters abroad. So they were actually um, recommending me to big schools abroad. But I wanted to do music and all that. I so my fear of not uh, leaving off the expectation, fear of actually fooling myself, fear of feeling like if I'd known, you know, fear fear of the unknown, basically fear of failure and. Um, None has come to pass because I'm still striving and um, we'll get there, basically. I know. And what was your, you know, your immediate circle, your family, your friends, how did they react when you told them you're resigning from a well-paid job to pursue a career in music? They called family meeting. <laughs> my mom called family meeting. My cousin, that was late, so she couldn't really handle it. She couldn't really fathom the fact that I had to leave that kind of job. So they were like, okay, why not work for a while? Save up money and go into music. But then I had the opportunity of being mentored by Cobra Mr. Sukwa, so I didn't want to miss that. And so uh, my mom still stood by me, even when some family members felt like I was making a great mistake, even up until now. And, um, they didn't take it away at first, but they're, they're coming around. Everyone's going to be all right at the end of the day. Mothers are priceless gold. She yes. still stood by you even She's when <laughs> she wasn't so pleased by your choice. But at the end of the day, she stood by you even when no one else did. Yeah. What would you say are some of the lessons that you've learned in the course of transiting? Because every day we are, I, you know, I get people who send me DMs to say, I'm practicing law. I want to quit my career and pursue a career in TV. And I'm like, well, it has to be a personal vision for you. So tomorrow, if it doesn't work out, you don't say, oh, Olive told me to leave. But I have lessons that I have learned from having switched from not practicing to doing this. I'm sure you've learned lessons and I would like to find out some of these lessons when we come back from this commercial break. And you're welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. I'm still speaking with Mela, who is sharing such a beautiful story of how he's been able to transition from having a well-paying job to pursuing a career in music. And he's done a very beautiful video, which we played at the start of the show. And we're going to be wrapping up today's show with the video Smile On Me, talking about how 
No, it's, it's not easy. The struggles of a musician, the struggle of pursuing your passion and pursuing your dream, dreams. Now, you started, you know, we, before we went on the break, we talked about how you had a job, you had a nine to five, a well paying job, and then you gave up that to pursue a career in music. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you some of the lessons that you learned in the course of it. But before I ask you what these lessons are, maybe I, I'd like to know what did you study in school? I did uh, urban regional planning. I first did estate management, uh, um, then did urban regional planning, and I did landscape architecture. So, like your first degree? Estate management. Okay, then your master's. Then I did um, a BSc in um, um, urban regional planning. And then you did a master's? In landscape architecture. And then you gave up all of this and pursued a career in music. Mm -hmm. Now, in the process of transiting from, you know, not doing it, not having a steady source of income to pursuing your passion, what would you say are some of the lessons that you learned in the course of all this? Basically, uh, I've learned that um, uh, I've learned that you can actually make it, that you can actually really hustle it out. The, 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 I've learned that you can actually conquer your fears, and um, I, I, I probably don't have blossom result to show that now because I'm still in in in, in the journey. But I've, I've learned that you, if you follow your passion, you will not have to regret anything in your life. And I wish that I did that very early in my life. Basically, I wish that I uh, had, had done this. I, I was so afraid. I, did, I felt like we, I had I needed a lot of money for PR and all that. And now that I'm coming out again, apart from having work, worked as a producer and all that, I feel like um, this is the time. So I've learned that there's no time that is too late or too early. I feel like whatever you think that you can do, do it and make the mistake. I've learned that mistakes will happen and you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine, basically. You would think that you're sharing lessons for others to learn, but you're actually inspiring me. You're talking to me right now, oh, even as you're speaking thank you know, you. and saying this. But let's talk about the point where you found out that you could sing and you had such a beautiful voice. What point was that? Was it before you went into school or during your stay in university? Okay. Um, when I was young, I used to sing at the back in the choir the children's choir everyone that's that's like a typical <laughs> story so uh but um actually really picked up singing in secondary school so basically i joined a, a mass choir kind of uh it was my, my distant cousin uncle it was laguni mass choir and so that's where i picked up music i started learning how to play the piano my dad used to be a classical pianist so i started learning how to play the piano and guitar and drums and so that's where i picked it up from and at what point, you, I know you mentioned earlier that you had found the opportunity to be interned by Kobamsa Sukwa and you had to take it. How did you catch Kobamsa's attention? Okay, so um, I did a song when I finished, finished university in 2002 or 2003. And so someone heard it. Oh, Mr. Shabak, I am grateful to Mr. Shabak. And so he heard the song and he went low key, played it for Kobams. So Kobams wanted to meet me. And so, I wanted Kobams to, I always wanted Kobams to produce me, and that's why I started learning production. So, and I started learning production because I wanted Kobams, and Kobams was too expensive, so I'm like, I need this guy to teach me, I need to be under him, and blah, 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 blah. And so, Kobams called me, and the first thing he said to me that I've not heard it sound like yours in eight years. Aww. And I, I felt like I, I felt like I was just going to die, you know, like, shift, let me faint, you know. And so, over time, he's been like a mentor to me, so I, whenever I, do any production, I send it to him. So change this, don't do this, do that. And over time, he's been a great mentor, and um, my, my sound has been formed. As, so people call me Kobam's Prodigy. And so I like, I like that name. I, li I like it, identify with it. But I feel like uh, he's, 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 he's put me to the right path. And um, We are grateful for mentors yeah. and people who are able to, who have walked the path and are mm -hmm. able to put down the ladder for others to climb. So thank you to Kobam's for teaching him how to produce and now you're a producer you produced the song which we played and we're going to be wrapping up the show as well with that song but has anyone told you that there's some sort of semblance between your sound and adequately go sound i don't know if it's your sound generally but from this video in mm, particular yeah yeah I've, I've heard a lot of um feedbacks and adequately good sound is a fantastic artist so if anyone says i i have that kind of sound i should be grateful so you, you understand and so I, I feel like in this part of the world, when they say you sound like somebody or your sound is like someone, we tend to want to be, and you know, I'm different. No, it's, the sound is the sound. And if, if someone says you sound like someone that is really good, you should be happy. 
So it means that I'm doing something good. I'm doing something oh, that's right. Sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. That's a lovely perspective. Yes, people <laughs> like to fight off that. Or oh, you sound like this person because everybody wants to be original. But it doesn't mean that you're you're a copycat. It doesn't mean it just means oh, there's something about you that reminds me of so 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 and so. Person. And he's doing he's doing a fantastic job. He's, he's someone that I respect a lot. I really respect him. And so if I want to say that I sound like um, Kobam. Just tell me that I sound like your legend and I'll, I'll just faint, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about, you know, on, on the average, how long does it take you to produce a song and what needs to get you into the mood? So we're in an industry where people need some sort of extra assistance mm. to be able to get into the mood. We see a lot of artists and how a lot of them depend on certain things to be able to get them in the mood. Mm. Do you have any of that or what gets you in the mood to produce So Basically, uh, I mean, it might sound ordinary, but... The only thing that takes longer time to to get done is writing, basically, because you have to really put yourself in the position to to visualize what you're writing about, to experience what you're writing about. You're writing about heartbreak, you probably need to date back to when you were heartbroken and all that. But apart from that, production is something I'm an experimental producer. It's just something I just get into the studio. I try a few sounds out, something that sounds nice. If I'm doing live, I bring in the guys in, like the, the, the song was, was done live. I bring in the guys in and we experiment sounds until I get what I'm looking for. Brilliant. In mm. conclusion, what is the future for Mila? I'm going to rule this music industry. Amen. Mark my words. And I join my faith with yours to say amen. You amen. will rule Thank the music you. industry. So please follow him, catch up with his music, support him, watch his videos, download his audios. How can people get to see all that you do? Okay, so um, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, at Mela Music, music is the case, so M E L A M U S I K, um, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And then um, the songs on YouTube, just search Smell on Me by Mela, and you see it All on right. YouTube. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos, when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.